Recently, the Heritage Foundation sent a team of policy experts to the Gulf Coast to investigate what is and is not working and what more needs to be done to tackle the oil spill problem. Distinguished fellow Ernest Istook joined a group of eight congressmen on a tour of the Gulf with local officials who described how bureaucracy, both from BP and from multiple federal agencies, has frustrated their attempts to halt oil from rushing between the coastal islands and into the large bay they border. What's the biggest challenge you have in getting enough resources? Well, it has been a challenge getting enough resources from day one. I still don't think we have enough skimmers now to deal with the oil. We have about 28 here in Grand Isle. But you need about 50 big skimmers to start. We, our goal is to protect the coast, not clean it up. You ought to have 50 large skimmers attacking all slicks four or five miles offshore before they even get here. And failing that, because we don't have enough skimmers, that's why we have these techniques we're using here, because we don't have enough skimmers. If you had enough skimmers, you'd line them up across the passes and skim the oil off before it got here. Something like that in a foreign country that's available. Man, take that act, the Jones Act, throw it out. The, this is an emergency. What's, what's the, and the, president can wave it. the president can wave it today and he's still not. It needs to be waved. Louisiana Representative Steve Squeeze also explained how EPA regulations have gotten in the way of cleanup efforts. Technology is available to intake large amounts of oily water, filter it, and return mostly oil-free water. But the EPA has objected unless the water returning to the ocean is 99.9985% pure. It's oily, but it's going to have a whole lot less particles of oil in it when it's coming out than when it was coming in because you're actually taking some of the oil. Well, EPA was telling them that they couldn't operate because they still had too much water, oil in the water that they were sending out, even though. They were actually removing a lot of the oil. They were saying there's still too much oil you're dumping out, so they wouldn't let them do anything. Yeah. This they is the kind of, have they fixed that? Yeah. Have they, they fixed that? They really haven't dumped yeah. it? Well, that's the whole hold up of machines like Kevin Costner's. <laughs> is they want to make sure that after you suck the oil and water in, that you not put any of the oil back in the water. Does that make any sense? If so you've got 99% exactly. water that you're sending out, there's still 1% oil, but you, what was coming in might have been 30%. I don't oil. care if you got 50%. So you were using 50% less oil, but you can't operate. But that, they want it to be 99.9985% pure. Yeah, actually, if I could add one thing to it, um, according to the governor's office, um, EPA does have emergency authority to waive that regulation, yeah. and they're choosing not to. Perhaps most plain was the feeling that bureaucracy was getting in the way of solutions and that the federal government simply isn't willing to do what is necessary to fix the problem. Well, does the EPA talk to you directly about these things? Do they go through some other channels where you don't have direct well, communication? Everything is through, even though we have an EPA rep here in the aisle, everything's got to go to home. That's where the supposed brains operation is. I can't tell you where it goes from there. That's where a lot of things get hung up with the EPA and federal agencies there. So we have a lot of issues with that. We don't know what happens when it gets to home. If I got to hear one more time, well, I got to get permission from home, I'm going to throw up. The command center. Sal Salazar and the full town, I've been on the island two or three times. They've never once come back with us. And this is photo ops. It's all about photo ops. Here? No, I uh, don't know. Dina, do you have much contact with the staff level, if not the secretary's on it? Not with uh, Homeland Security, though. No, Sal every time um, a La Polo Town or Salazar has come to Grand Isle, they go off with some big wigs on a boat or a helicopter or something like that. I, I, they've never met with you know local Homeland Security. I don't think they've met with the town. Nope. In fact, she drove past me the last time she landed. I was standing at the airport waiting for you to come in, and she drove right past me. Yeah. No oil in those marshlands. Uh, and now, after fighting for three weeks and four weeks, in some cases, with the federal government, even if they approve a plan, there's already oil getting in. Uh, and so you've lost part of the battle just fighting against the federal bureaucrats. About environmental impacts that don't exist, when you're seeing actual environmental damage occur to pelicans' nests uh, that they don't seem to be concerned about because they don't have any alternative plan. That's the worst part of this, this frustration that our local leaders are facing, is that they're spending more of their time fighting with the federal government than they are fighting with battling the oil.